Hello. Okay. Next up, we have Colin Platt from Liquity, who will be talking about Liquity V2, the end game for CDPs. Welcome, Colin, everyone. Thank you, Parvina, and thank you, everybody, for staying here. I know it's it's late. It's nearly seven o'clock, uh, so I won't keep you too long. Um, today, I'm going to chat about uh, Liquity V2. Uh, some of you may have heard about us. Uh, we had a V1, as you can guess from the name, uh, from 2001. Um, I, I joined about a year ago to, to lead product on V2. Um, what I really want to kind of get into talk about today is reference rates. First of all, what is a reference rate when we talk about uh, rates? So if I start to ask people a question about how much does it cost to borrow in DeFi, um, some people might start talking about Fed rates or things like that. Um, a lot of people say, well, how much does it cost on Aave in this very minute? That's a problem, and that's what I want to talk about. So the first question is, do we actually need a DeFi native reference rate? Do we need a rate that we can all rely on? We all go, yeah, that's the number. Um, I think we do. Yes, thank you. Uh, right now, everybody's looking at Aave, usage rates. Uh, there's a lot of problems with Aave. Aave is a great product. There's a lot of problem with using that rate as a reference rate. A, it goes up and down a lot. B, it's based on usage. Even Aave between OP, Arbitrum, and Mainnet aren't all the same. It might be backed by ETH on one, USDC on the other. It moves around. Also, because we're looking at things with stable coins that rely on the traditional finance system, we have a lot of friction. Uh, we heard in the last panel people talking about wires that take a long time. Fortunately, that reminded me to send money that only took 30 seconds because I bank in Europe. Um, reference rates are where we need to go. Uh, reference rates means we can make our own rates and we can do it efficiently because we're borrowing and lending inside the same market. And of course, we have blockchains with our Beach or OP that take sub seconds or maybe 12 seconds if we need to wait for mainnet. Let's talk a little bit more about what some of the, the rates uh, tend to be. So as I mentioned, Aave, up and down, it can be unpredictable. Even things like uh, Maker, or sorry, was it Sky or was it Maker? I don't remember. Um, we don't really know what the rates are going to be from one to the next. It's very hard to speculate. It's very hard to hedge. If we look at these things historically, Aave up here at the top, moving up and down, uh, we've seen some of these things go from single digits to low triple digits over short periods. Even in very liquid markets, um, if E starts pumping, hopefully that keeps happening, um, it, it puts a lot of stress on the system. And until they can start to equal out, people are paying a lot of money. Now imagine you go to sleep, you're super happy because ETH is pumping, and then you get liquidated because your interest rates have just gone through the roof. You couldn't get in in time. That's very frustrating. People don't like that. In Maker, we still have the same problems. Somebody comes on, they turn into Athena. Athena's got huge rates. That's great. But at the same time, that means our rates inside of Maker, whatever, um, go up overnight from 2 3% to 15%. I don't decide what that is. Somebody else decides for me. We're in DeFi because we're here because we want something that is decentralized. Hell, we even want control. Let's talk about what we're doing with V2. The idea here is user set interest rates. That means you, the users of V2, because everybody in this room will be a user of V2 on day one. You heard it here. Can set your own rates. That means you decide how much you're going to pay to borrow. Sounds like magic, huh? There is a catch. We have, as some people have heard with V1, something called redemptions. What redemptions mean is when there is not sufficient demand for the stablecoin, there's an order of people who get redeemed. What that means is they swap collateral to repay their debt. So they have collateral backing their loans. That is swapped if you're at the lowest end. In this, it is the lowest rate. It makes a lot of sense. You're paying the lowest rate. What happens? Somebody says, you got to either up your rate or you got to swap, you got to close out your loan, you got to pay it back. Somebody can pay it back on your behalf, you can pay it back on your half. We also let you move your rate up. What we arrive at is a market equilibrium. This market equilibrium becomes that reference rate. This becomes how much it is to borrow dollars in DeFi with no governance, no proxies, anything on top of this. This is autonomous, this is driven by the market, it's driven by you, the users that hold stable coins and that borrow. This is DeFi. As you said, stablecoin up and down. This is what really drives the mechanic of it. When we're paying too much as an aggregate of all the borrowers, well, of course this is great. P 
people are getting paid more money than they should be, more money than they get paid elsewhere, more money than it's worth. So you're willing to pay more, more than a dollar for the stable coin. That means everybody looks at it and they go, well, I'm gonna bring my rate down. I, I don't have to worry about this redemption problem. That's weird. I'm gonna go right down to the minimum. And that starts to make the token less attractive and brings it back to a dollar. On the flip side, when redemptions are a concern, as I said, people are bringing it right back up and that makes the token more attractive. This means that we can look inside the economics. We heard a lot about emerging economies. Hell, DeFi is an emerging economy. Our emerging economy can have its own rate. That's huge and that's what we're all here for. I got Sam's animated slide there. So, TLDR, we need a reference rate in DeFi. We need a rate that is our rate. We are a huge growing economy. Just like any other economy, Thailand has their own reference rates. If we go to Malaysia, they have their own reference rates. Of course, the United States, Europe have their own reference rates. We need one too. But what we really need is we need users who are decentralized to be in control of their money, to be in control of what they pay, to be in control of what they lend at. This is what liquidity is looking to offer. We want to build markets that fix this. We want markets to become the drivers of what markets for money should be. We don't want Wall Street. We don't want governance to decide what your rates should be. We don't want users that decide, I need to park some money here for a day or two to decide. We want users that are actively lending and borrowing to decide the rates that they receive and the rates they pay. This is the promise of Liquid EV2. It's the promise of Bold. One last thing I have to say, I was supposed to say at the top. Uh, Sam and I are gonna be here all week. I uh, would love to chat with all you guys about Liquid EV2, chat about Bold. Uh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here.